What's up everyone, Taiki here, and today I want to discuss why I believe Celestia is going to be this cycle's 3-3. So if you like the content, please like and subscribe and check out the premium discord, the link will be in the description below. Prices will be going up at the end of the month. Okay, so let's get right into it. So this weekend, last weekend, on Saturday, I woke up around 8am and I just had this epiphany. And I felt like I just had to put this idea uh, down on Twitter and see how people will react. And it's... You know, it's a pretty controversial, I guess, um, headline why Tia is going to be the cycles 3-3. Three, three. Um, it's going to be a long read, but I'm going to just read through this and give, I guess, provide some color of my commentary. Um, and I think if you're new to crypto or you're exploring crypto and thinking about why prices move the way they do, I think understanding, I guess, the bull case and the narrative around Celestia will be pretty beneficial in order for you to navigate future crypto cycles. Um, and you know, this is just a culmination of my knowledge for being in the space for a very long time. Um, but let's get right into it. So this video or this piece is going to be separated into four sections. What is Celestia? What's the narrative around the token? What similarities does Tia have with 3.3? So Olympus style, right? 3.3 and what I'm doing to prepare for this. Okay, so cool. Um, and I know people think of Olympus DAO as a Ponzi, and in a way, it was a Ponzi. Um, of course, it was a transparent Ponzi. Everyone knew the games of, or everyone knew the rules of the game, um, but people just aped in and you know, some people made a bunch of money, some people lost a bunch of money. You know, so it, it is what it is. That's how markets work. Um, I am not claiming Celestia to be a Ponzi. No, I'm just, I guess, making comparisons on why I think Celestia will enter a bubble. And I think we are in the middle of the bubble um, right now. I think Celestia is, is, I mean, objectively one of the most important technical, techno, <laughs> sorry, technological advancements uh, that we've seen in a long time. And if you want to read some more, um, I guess, content on it, I don't want this video to be too long. I'm not going to just explain data availability and why that's important to you. Um, but No Sleep John on Twitter has a really good piece on it. Um, Eric Wall, um, I think he's a pretty well-respected figure in the space. He's an early investor in the Celestia, um, and you know he's bull up on it since 2022. But I guess my TLDR is that Celestia makes it easier and cheaper for new projects to deploy new rollups in blockchains, or basically like new more rollups. Uh, for example, Manta Network saved over 99% in fees by using Celestia for DA instead of Ethereum. And these are significant cost savings that can be passed down to users. So you can go here and you know, they use Celestia to post data. And it's really expensive for new teams to, I guess, spin up new blockchains, right? You have to figure out the data availability layer. You have to pay validators. It's a lot of work. And Celestia just specializes in the DA layer um, and it just makes it easier and faster to spin up new rollups. That's kind of the idea. And it's a pure growth narrative. Uh, Celestia makes almost no money. I mean, their business model is to save people money. Uh, so naturally, you know, there really isn't that much, I guess, revenues or profits to be realized. Um, however, you know, if you think about growth narratives and, you know, um, infinite PE ratios and whatnot, um, if Celestia is the way for thousands and hundreds or millions of new rollups to launch in the coming years, then yeah, like at some point they have to figure out how to monetize that, right? Um, it's kind of like, you know, Uber, you know, like they made no money and then now they make money. That's kind of the idea with these types of liquid venture investments. Um, but no, that's the idea. Um, and, you know, I'll, I mean, I'll provide this thread in the description below so you can kind of read through this uh, if you want to. Um, this is a 10 minute video that I think explains it much better. Um, to be honest, I'm not really technologically that savvy. Um, I'm more a student of, you know, CryptoPonsonomics, how you know, why prices move, where money flows, why things happen, and looking more into, you know, I guess like where the space is going. That's kind of my strength. My strength is not really explaining, you know, like modular blockchains, monolithic blockchains, like pros and cons of both. It's more around, okay, like I understand 80 to 90% of, you know, the gist of everything in crypto. Um, and then it's my job to determine, okay, what makes good investments? What makes good, uh, I guess, trades slash opportunities and whether it's worth risking my own capital. That's kind of what I focus on and like my research company and whatnot. Um, but let's talk about the narrative around Celestia now that you kind of understand what it is. Um, but you know, I believe Celestia and the token Tia is the purest way, right? The purest way to gain exposure to the airdrop narrative in 2024 and 2025. We've already had two big airdrops to Tia stakers, or maybe not that big. Um, I think Saga is like going to be like a pretty weak one. I'm not going to lie. And I think Dimension is going to be a pretty strong one and many more confirmed, so there's Manta Network, which I'll get into more later. Um, so yeah, let, let's get right into it. So, you know, like I mentioned, Celestia makes it easier for new rollups to launch. Some rollups will airdrop to Tia stickers. That's the Cosmos ethos. 
um, if you think about all the projects that's launched using the Cosmos SDK, they've all stake, sorry, they've all airdropped to Atom stakers, right? Even Celestia airdropped to Atom and Osmo stakers. It's part of the ethos. So if you're using the Cosmos SDK or even Celestia for DA and you don't airdrop tokens to the community, then pitchforks will come out, right? People will be pissed and there's a chance that there is no community that's going to form. And it, you know, all the tokens are going to be in the team and the VCs. And of course, if they make a really, really good product, then yeah, you know, price can go up. Um, but, you know, like, do we really want to support those stingy teams, VCs? As, you know, as a liquid market participator, right, I don't really participate in private deals um, as part of my ethos. Um, I don't, I'm not really a fan of that, okay? Um, so it, Cosmos already has that ethos. Um, I fully understand that I'm not going to get all the airdrops, right? Maybe I miss some criteria. That's fine. But if I can just capture, let's say, 25 to 50% of all airdrops that happen to the stakers, then I'll be golden financially, uh, in my opinion. And if you think about it, L1 and L2 tokens command a premium in the market. Uh, in crypto, there really aren't that many killer apps, right? Like, you know, like, yeah, there's, there's like no apps. I mean, there's Uniswap and whatnot, but, you know, there's like Uniswap alternatives. There's like no single app that exists in crypto where if it goes to zero, I mean, you know, the, the entire world is going to collapse, right? I mean, that's not really how it's going to go. Of course, if Lido collapses, then, you know, all the crypto degens and like, you know, the crypto people, um, they're going to get wrecked. I mean, myself included, um, but it's not really going to cause some economic doom or anything, right? It's just that some 20 to 40 year olds are going to just like lose a bunch of their life savings, um, which I mean, I'm not hoping for that. But you know, if you think about it, there's no real killer use cases, um, or apps in crypto. So as a result, people just buy infrastructure, right? Whether it be L1 tokens, L2 tokens, like Solana makes no money, but hey, you know, like people are building on Solana and at some point they can capture some uh, fees and value growth. That's, you know, it's everything in crypto or most things in crypto is a growth narrative. Um, so that's kind of how um, all these L1 or all these infra tokens have such a premium over, let's say, app tokens. So, you know, let's think about this. So we see this narrative taking form. This is a narrative. It really doesn't matter what the price of TI is and the valuation because the airdrops will more than make up for it. I realized this like, not that early because, um, I mean, I've talked about this before. Like, I missed out on the Celestia airdrop. Um, not, I mean, I, I got it, but I couldn't figure out how to claim it. And I just like was like, you know what, like, I'm too lazy, right? Because I wasn't really thinking at the time. Um, and I think the Celestia airdrop, if I did claim it, would be worth like twenty to $30,000 or like whatever. Right? I mean, it's a lot of money, right? Five, like low to mid five figures. Um, and I know like it's easy for me to be like, oh, like I missed out. I hate this token. Um, but then I reevaluated the project and the token. And I'm like, you know what? Like it really doesn't matter right now. Um, and you can kind of see why this has all the telltale signs of a bubble. Um, so, you know, one of the reasons I'm making this video is because, well, I think this is going to happen for these reasons and I want people to be aware of it. Um, because in crypto, like it's really hard to try to understand why these things have such a high valuation. Um, but trying to, I guess, figure out why, or like, you know, trying to understand like the reasons for why these things happen might allow you to better navigate the markets. Of course, I am not like a wizard. I, 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 I can't predict the markets, right? I'm not a psychic. Um, I can just only make educated bets and hope they pan out. Um, so that's the idea. So, you know, for example, my dimension airdrop, um, you know, it, like it, it already covers my cost basis for Tia, right? So I staked Tia, right? A bunch of wallets. Um, I got DYM, a bunch of wallets. And I mean, at the time of writing, the price um, on DYM was $4. Uh, now there seems to be buyers. Now it's trading at $5. Um, I'm pretty bullish this project, not because I got the airdrop. I mean, that's part of it too. Um, but I do think that, you know, if you're bullish Celestia, you kind of have to be bullish Dimension is kind of the idea. Um, but, you know, that's going to be a topic for a whole nother discussion. But yeah, I mean, I I bought Celestia at $13, right? Um, the valuation makes no sense, but it doesn't matter because I got this airdrop and, you know, like now I 2X'd, right? Or I'm like more than 2X because Celestia is up and Dimension probably goes up. But, you know, that's, that's kind of idea, right? The valuation doesn't matter because all these free tokens of the future are going to make me more money. That's kind of the narrative around Celestia and why it's been literally up only. Up only. Look at that. It's like absolutely ridiculous. Um, so that, that's one of the narrative. Um, and, you know, I've talked about Dimension in the past. I'm not going to get into it because I don't want this video to get too long. But, you know, um, the idea is um, if you think about monolithic and modular blockchains, monolithic, monolithic is like Solana, where it's one chain that does it all. It's an integrated chain, and then modular separates out um, execution, settlement, and uh, data availability. So Celestia is really good at data availability, and it's better than Ethereum at that. Um, 
or at least that's the narrative. And then dimension is gonna just be really, really good at settlement, right? So, you know, if like, should the settlement layer be worth more than the data availability layer? It could be, right? Like, I mean, the thing is no one actually knows. Um, and that's part of the bubble because no one really knows how to value these things. Um, and if staking these tokens get you more airdrops, then why should it matter? Um, of course, at some point it will matter. Um, and that's why these bubbles just go crazy and then this like crashes down. Um, Anyways, with the airdrop narrative, you can see that this is a very reflexive, reflexive cycle. The higher price goes, the higher, the stronger the narrative is, and the stronger, sorry, the higher the price of Tia goes, it should technically drive up the price of DYM as well, right? Because if, well, if Celestia is worth, let's say, like nineteen billion dollars, is DYM at five billion dollars? Is that is that fairly valued, right? Like, what if Celestia goes to thirty? Then maybe DYM should go to ten. I, I mean, like, I'm not predicting these things, I have no idea, um, but I'm just like, th this is how market psychology works. Um, and as more and more airdrops happen, and we see these success stories of, you know, like the Dimension airdrop or other airdrops, we should see more demand to buy and stake TIA for future airdrops. And, you know, this is the number of unique delegators, so like the number of wallets staking, I, I suppose. Um, and, you know, it's just like, like this, like, you know, this, when the slope just like increased here, um, that's when the dimension claims happen. Um, the snapshot was taken here and like no one, I mean, I, I thought that would be like bullish, but I mean, it didn't really change anything. And then I guess now once people started to claim, it's like, oh, wow, wow, like it's real, right? And then people are like FOBOing in and understand that for all Cosmos chains, if you stake with a, um, a validator, there's a 21 day unstaking period, right? So you can't just stake and unstake like next day. If you want to unstake, you have to wait 21 days, right? So, you know, that also like, like locks up part of the circulating supply. So more airdrops, more demand for TIA, more, I guess, staking demand for TIA, and then more supply gets locked up. So, you know, it, it becomes a more illiquid, I guess, market, um, which might drive prices higher really quickly or, you know, drive prices lower really quickly. Um, and then there's people like, you know, speculating on perps on centralized exchanges. Um, but I don't, I don't understand like why they're doing that because if you're just like longing stuff on uh, exchanges, then you're not gonna be getting your drops, but whatever, right? Uh, TS staking also fits my thesis um, because I do think that the alt L1 trade comes back the cycle. Um, I'm not saying Ethereum is dead, um, but you know, going, going back to this tweet, um, I kind of expected ETH in layer twos to establish a bigger moat and lead uh, from other alt, alt L1 since the end of the bull, which was well, the last bull, which was November, 2021. But if you think about it, I mean, Arbitrum, Optimism, they look the exact same. Sure, like the tech might get better, there's EIP 4844, but generally, I mean, the apps are the same. And, you know, ZK Sync, right? Tons of VCs piled money into ZK Sync, and then the number one TVL project is SyncSwap, right? It's literally SyncSwap. Um, and uh, yes, TVL is not that important of a metric, but it's more of like this light bulb moment of like, yeah, like Ethereum L2s, it's like not much has changed, right? If you think about it. Um, so, okay, I have, to, I have to go down here. Let's see. Um, so me, right? Um, I there, there's kind of like this meme right now where I'm a mid curve, right? Um, I represent 68% of the population, and I'm a mid curve, um, and I'm okay being a mid curve. Um, that, that 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 that's totally fine with me. Um, and then I'm like, okay, like if I'm a mid curve, then do I really want to like buy L1 like Sui, Aptos, Solana, say like all these new tickers, um, and just like hope that I make the right bet this cycle? Uh, no, like if I'm a mid curve, I might as well as a stake Tia and get all these airdrops, and then some I'll hold to zero, some I'll hold to infinity, um, some I'll sell, and it'll like just pump the Valhalla, and I'll feel bad. Um, and it's, it's kind of like a comforting narrative, right? Uh, it's if you think about the friction of buying Tia, it's there's not that much friction, right? Because it's like oh well, like you know, I I, I like crypto. I'm gonna hold something for like two years. Um, I don't know what to hold. Um, uh, Bitcoin, ETH, uh, Solana. Oh man, Tia. You know, it, it, it's like pretty easy to enter like the trade because it's a good narrative. It's, it's a very very simple narrative. It's it's very psychologically comfortable, right? You have to think about this type of stuff. Um, and also, I'm, I'm seeing parallels in the Solana and the Cosmos thesis. So Solana obviously is doing really well. It's um, trading like almost a hundred dollars. Um, people thought they were dead, but they're not dead, right? Um, builders have continued to build um, despite FTX and SPF and all that uh, drama, um, and now their efforts are paying off. And similarly, you know, like these Cosmos chains, they've raised tons of money from VCs. They've been building throughout the bear market. Um, they're not really good at marketing, right? Because they're just devs. They just like build stuff and then they ship stuff. 
they don't only really communicate with like regular people. They don't really know how to talk to normies. Um, and I think I had a tweet. Oh yeah, there you go. So you know, like one of the problem with the Cosmos Eco is that you know the devs are high IQ but low EQ, um, and they don't really know how to market or talk to regular people. Um, and that's why I think you know this is why teams should just just stare drop to everybody, right? Just let just devs can focus on devving and then give something like five to ten percent of the supply to people, and then let the community create a narrative. Um, and we're already seeing this happen, right? For example, like Dimension. Right, like if you just look up this DYM ticker on Twitter, like there's so many discussions happening on like why this thing should be worth like a hundred billion dollars or something, right? It's absolutely ridiculous, but I mean it's happening. And then the token Dime, right? Um, there's this meme already. It's called Diamond Hands, right? Like, I mean, surely the Dimension team didn't come up with this. It's the community that got the airdrop, and they're like, you know what? Like, that's a good meme, right? We are Diamond Hands. That's pretty good, right? And then Dime is money. Time is money. Dime is money. That's pretty good. And then you know. Saga, right? Um, I mean, th this is kind of a joke, right? It's kind of a joke. Um, but Saga had this really, really, you know, very stingy airdrop criteria um, where they took a snapshot on December 1st. So basically under, like, under a month before, or sorry, um, I believe, like, uh, Celestia launched, like, early November, and then the snapshot was taken, like, under a month, right, since the token went live. I mean, there's, like, no way that there's a strong Celestia community on December 1st. Right now, it's starting to form. So like, like, what are they doing, right? The team just wanted to keep all the supply. The, the VCs just didn't want to give it to like people like you and I. Um, and I'm like, yeah, like what the hell, right? Like I did not qualify to airdrop, therefore I will FUD Saga whenever it goes live, right? I have nothing against the team, right? But I think that if we want <laughs> to foster this culture, and this is already happening, right? It's like, if you give me an airdrop, I love your project and I will bull post it. If you don't give me an airdrop, then it's going to zero, right? That's kind of like the crypto mentality. And I think developers shouldn't mid-curve this. They should just give away tokens to as many people as possible. Let the just reward the community because that's how communities form. And then, you know, um, you know, one of the promises I made is, well, like, you know, I'm, I'm gonna try to get all these teams to airdrop. I mean, like, why, why shouldn't they, right? Um, and then Manta, they just introduced, um, or did they just like discuss like, um, I guess the airdrop criteria and like the token supply and whatnot. You know, like yada yada yada, um, and then in a Twitter Spaces last week, they were like, "Oh yeah, like we'll reward the Celestia stakers," and then like it it doesn't contain the Celestia stakers. I'm like, "What? Like did they lie to us?" And you can kind of see that you know, lots of views, right? People are like, people are pissed, right? Um, and I mean, if they did lie to us, then that's very very bearish, right? I, I will actually fund them if they lied to us um, because that that's awful, right? They raised sixty million dollars from VCs at a half a billion dollar valuation, and now they're out here lying to the community. That's unacceptable. Um, maybe, maybe, right? Maybe um, as part of ecosystem and community, they'll give some airdrops distributed through governance. Maybe a couple months in, they'll be like, okay, like, like let's give I don't know, like two percent to the TIA stakers because we love the TIA community. Yeah, yeah. Then, then, then we're happy. Then, then, like, then I'll both. I'm like, yeah, like that's that's great, right? Manta's first zk zk EBM L2 is using Celestia for DA. I mean, that's the future finance, right? Uh, so you know. There's also there's always a community element uh, when it comes to crypto, and if you also think about it, like why did Ohm get so big? Because there was a strong community of three three ers and nine nine ers, um, and you know like if you fud Ohm on the internet, then pitchforks come out. Um, it's definitely a cult, um, and that's how bubbles form, right? There has to be a cult element, there has to be a community element, there has to be like this lockup supply <laughs> to like get more tokens kind of element, um, and that's kind of you know what I'm alluding to. Um, but you know, like, you know, Celestia is Cosmos SDK, you know, like it's in the Cosmos ecosystem. Um, so if Cosmos does have a renaissance like Solana, then it should also benefit. Uh, but I mean, I've kind of alluded to this, but let's talk about like why this is like the 3-3. Let me kind of zoom in so you can kind of, okay. So right here, right? Like what makes this a 3-3 of the cycle? This is gonna be the progression in my opinion. First, the market sees big airdrops. I mean, you know, like if this thing trades at $5, you like literally if you stake one tier, like one unit of tier, like twenty dollars, you got two hundred tokens, right? Like you stake twenty dollars to get a thousand dollars. I mean, that's that's pretty ridiculous, right? That's pretty ridiculous. Um, so you know, markets see these big airdrops, and who knows, maybe the token goes up, and it's like, then the more, then the ETH maxi community and like the other non Cosmos believer community will be like, wow, like, wow, the Cosmos ecosystem is kind of cooking, right? It's cooking, right? There's there's stuff going on there, um, and then there's like you know more hype can happen, and then you know. We see the Dimension airdrop, there's a Saga airdrop, the Manta airdrop, hopefully, right? Um, if they didn't lie to us. Um, and then, you know, there's more and more airdrops. And if you just follow Celestia on Twitter, like every single 
week, there's a couple projects that announces that they're using Celestia for DA. Um, and if the narrative is that Celestia makes it easier for uh, to, like, I guess, launch new rollups, then we should expect hundreds of rollups. Maybe 99 of them go to zero, but the, like all you need is one airdrop, right? That's kind of like the uh, psychographic. And then people dream about the size, uh, the size of these airdrops. And then you know, if you kind of do this mental model or mental math in your head, buyers become more and more price insensitive, price insensitive because of airdrop expectations. Um, I'll be honest, I have no idea how to value this thing, but I think the market is valuing Tia um, with this generic function, okay? Valuation equals future value accrual to the data availability layer. I have no idea what that is. Mimetics, I mean, that's very fluffy. Narrative, right? I have no idea. And the future expectations of airdrops to Tia stakers, right? If you stake $1,000 to the Tia and then you get more than $1,000, then like, why should you care what the valuation is? Um, so naturally, because the first three points is kind of fluffy, um, and the fourth one is the only one we can kind of cling on to. That's what, you know, that, I mean, our hu the human brain just clings on the simple things because we don't want to overcomplicate things. Um, so, you know, yeah, who cares, right? And then I, I don't really know who this guy is, like nothing against this guy, but um, I actually took this from um, Jordi Alexander, one of his articles. Um, and, you know, it's like this, uh, like last cycle in 2021, we had like Olympus Dow, Wonderland, and like all these like forks promising like, Drill, like billions and gajillions of APYs. And I mean, like at the time it was crazy, right? Like I, I go on YouTube and there's like all these new like, uh, like Zoomers and like new YouTubers I've never heard of with like thousands of like, like tens of thousands of views talking about all these own forks. And I'm like, wow, people really love this stuff. Um, but you know, it's, it's a pretty, I mean, it's like, it's like a good narrative, right? Because trading is hard. Investing is very, very hard. So if there's an asset where you can just buy and stake and no matter what price does, like you'll, you'll make money. I mean, why wouldn't people like that? Of course, in the case of Olympus Dow, in like the forks, the APY is being paid out in the token, right? So um, if the token goes to zero, then the APY is zero, right? So, and then like whatever money you put in goes to zero. Um, so, you know, people figure that out eventually. And, you know, like this narrative of, you know, if the APY is so high that you can enter later and make a lot of money, regardless of the price, I mean, that, that's not how math works, right? Um, price of OM can go down 99% and you'll be okay because the API will make up for it. Now's the narrative. And now the narrative, and I'm not saying that, you know, this is the right narrative, but this is what's happening, right? As market participants, like we can't just project our opinions on the market. We just have to observe the market for what it is and understand why prices are moving. And you know, right now people are saying it doesn't matter because the airdrops will make up for it. And how can, how can people disagree? I mean, the dimension airdrop, is, it's a big one, right? It's a really big one. And if you're an early part of the Celestia community, then chances are like you're up two, three, four, five X, right? Pretty crazy. Um, completely different project. Celestia, amazing technological innovation, like amazing. Ohm, you know, not, not like nothing compared to Celestia, um, but the narrative has similarities and it has the characteristics, characteristics of a future bubble. And also like what creates bubbles, right? What creates bubbles is if, I guess, like retail, like piles into the trade, right? I mean, like to put it bluntly, right? I'm, I mean, I'm retail. We're all retail uh, in the grand scheme of things. Um, we're all just doing the best we can. Um, and, you know, we have to deal with the results. Um, but, I mean, I run a YouTube channel. I see the metrics. I see the views and the numbers. And the one thing I've realized is that retail just loves their jobs. And, like, why, like why, why, why shouldn't they, right? The promise of turning, like, $100 into, like, $100,000 sounds amazing. And, you know, I mean, I'm not really like attacking these YouTubers because I mean, I make, t I mean, I'm literally making a Celestia video, right? So like I'm part of the problem, I suppose. Um, but I mean, like I'm just trying to provide a market commentary. Um, and I'm telling you that, I mean, this is a bubble, right? We're in this bubble. I have no idea how it's gonna go, but it, I mean, it is gonna be a bubble, right? That's kind of my observation. Um, and even like my channel, right? It's like I have these podcasts and they do pretty well. Um, I had Ansem on, right? Like the main character, 21,000 views. But like, you know, like this ultimate Cosmos and Celestia airdrop farming guy, 2024 has 24,000 views, right? People just love airdrops. Um, and then, you know, I, I know, like I, I, I make some book review video with 4,000 views and then I'm like, oh, like Dimension and Manta airdrop updates, 9.4 thousand views. Just people gravitate towards airdrop content. Um, and if people demand airdrop content, then it's natural for crypto YouTubers and TikTokers to just create airdrop content. That's how it works. And it, that's also a reflux, like, reflexive cycle when it comes to attention. So, you know, the other YouTubers I talked about is like Crypto Cove. Um, 
I don't really do tutorials. Um, I let other people do it, right? So um, if you want to yeah, maybe shout out to this guy. I mean, okay, like let's, let's talk about this, right? You go down here, Bungie refuel tutorial, 150 board views. Um, you know, stake 20 Tia, turn 200 into $10,000, 23,000 views, right? Um, and now he's becoming like this airdrop uh, farming uh, guru guide. Uh, and th there's nothing wrong with that, right? I mean, I'm like very useful content, like good job, right? I mean, he's adjusting to the market environment, you know, like very short, simple, easy, done. great, good stuff, right? Crypto Cove, good stuff. Miles, right? He, this guy's a grinder, right? I, I really respect um, the hustle. And, you know, it's like, yeah, like airdrops, 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 right? Turn 100 into 18K, you know, like, I, I don't know if that's possible, but it, I mean, it could be like, how, how can I, I mean, literally you could have turned $20 into $1,000. So like, like, what am I supposed to say, right? I mean, yeah, it's, it's possible, I guess, you know, Dynamo DeFi, right? Also, Patrick, he's a good guy, you know, um, How to Bridge the Mendes, 900 views. Cosmos Airdrop Guide with insane potential, 26,000 views. People just love airdrops. And I mean, if you're a trader, like you have to keep track of this stuff, right? You can't just go on Twitter and be like, this is good tech this tech is going to pump, right? Like, <laughs> that's, that's not how it works. It's more like, okay, like, what do people care about? And like, what are they going to buy? And like, objectively, I mean, the data says that people just love airdrop farming and then they're going to go. I mean, that, that's part of the reason why Solana is doing well, right? Because there's so many airdrops. Um, and I'm sure like, you know, like Eigenlayer and like the Ethereum-based airdrops will also do well. Um, but I mean, this, this is the meta, right? Just this, this, this meta. And yes, like, you know, I'm also making these videos, like, but the thing is like, like all my TS staked, like, I literally can't sell, right? So like, I'm not like making this video because I wanted to go up and like, I, I can like dump my, t no, like, I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna sell. I mean, I'll talk about what I'm doing later um, as part like, you know, as like the final part. Um, but you know, like I'm just saying, I'm just calling the, a spade a spade, you know? It's just like, is it too late? I mean, I personally don't think it's too late. I mean, I still have my TS staked, right? So like, I don't think it's too late. Celestial like literally launched two months ago and like the, to like think that the airdrop narrative just like is over it doesn't make sense to me right if you think that Celestia is like actually like a very very legit project um there will be a time right if Celestia hits some crazy valuation and as these airdrops get diluted over time it's there, there will be a point where it's not going to be worth it and i think that's when the, the bubble uh, is going to deflate um and just because tia is a very legit project doesn't make it immune from bubbles in fact the more legit stuff might make it more likely to create bubbles right because you know, like it's easier to buy something that's more legit. People are tired of the scams in crypto, right? So if they're gonna pile into something, it better be, you know, better be legit. Um, like outside of meme coins, of course. And then, you know, if you see this bubble um, forming, um, then a profit-driven individual, trader, investor, like whatever, right? Um, if you identify this, then like why not participate, right? Like that's not irrational. You can view something as a bubble and then still participate because you think the bubble is gonna be high, uh, get bigger. But that, that's totally fine. Um, no, George Soros, famous quote, when I see a bubble forming, I rush in to buy, adding fuel to the fire. That's not irrational. And that's why we need regulators to counteract the market when the bubble is threatening to grow too big. Um, so in this case, maybe the regulators are going to be, I don't know, you know, like maybe someone makes like an anti airdrop uh tech, right? Which kind of kills the bubble and then it uh, go, like allows Tia to get to a like much more like fair value. Um, but like, who am I to say that Tia is not undervalued, right? I mean, you know, like it's kind of competing with Ethereum. Like, you know, Ethereum is like a couple hundred billion dollar market cap um, in a way. So, you know, like who am I to say it's not like it, sh it shouldn't be worth more? I mean, I, I don't know, right? Like I'm a mid curve, right? Literally, I'm a mid curve. Um, so, you know, a mid curve does what a mid curve does. And I just submit to mid curve narratives. Um, <laughs> oh man okay I, i'm also writing this um to remind myself in the future to be humble and take profits even if the narrative feels indestructible um the higher price a higher the higher the price goes the better the narrative is right i mean if you liked you know celestia at three dollars you'll love it at nine dollars right um and if you love it at nine dollars you'll love it at eighteen dollars and you'll love it at you know like it's if it keeps going higher then you know there's like if Celestia, i mean hypo, like, let's say I mean, okay, like, let's, let's do this. If someone's buying Celestia at $19, they're doing it because they expect it to get to like $38 or like whatever, right? Where like the airdrops are going to be worth it. Um, and then if someone buys at $38, then they expect it to go to $76. And then if they buy at $76, then they expect it to go to like $200. And then if they, if people buy at $200, then they expect it to go to 1000 And then it's like, oh, like, oh, you know, like, like, I have no idea. Okay. 
Um, <laughs> I drew this in 30 seconds, but, and okay, like this chart, okay, like this has like no pullbacks, right? Like I'm not saying that there's gonna be no pullbacks. Um, but you know, I, I kind of generally expect like Tia to just go up a lot and then at some point it's gonna like just come back down um, just because at some point it's not gonna make sense to like buy and stake. Um, so for that reason, right, as Tia, if Tia is the purest, is the purest way to play the airdrop narrative, I think it's gonna be an amazing bull market hold and a very, very painful bear market hold. Um, people are gonna unwind, right, once they realize that the, that the valuation doesn't make sense. Even if the, they even if they expect more airdrops and but like people make like a 10, 20, 30 X, at some point people will sell, right? And then there's gonna be a bunch of supply. Um, VCs, like team and VC unlocks happen, I believe November of next year. Um, so maybe people start unwinding before then. Honestly, I have no idea, okay? It kind of just depends on how strong the airdrop narrative is. Um, but understand that, you know, there's a 21 day unbonding period. Um, so like the moment you realize that it's like over, you have to wait 21 days. And then that's gonna just, create like more and more sellers on the way down, I think. Um, and you know, it's, it's gonna be a brutal uh, <laughs> brutal uh, thing to hold, I, I, I think. Um, and I think, you know, eventually I think it will like, you know, base out and go higher just because I think Tia is an amazing project, but you know, that, that, that's besides the point. So what's, what's the plan? I am staying Tia, okay? Like I'll hold some airdrops, I'll sell some airdrops. When do I sell? I don't know, okay? like. The point of a bubble is that it can go much higher than you expect, and it can go much lower than you expect. Um, my current plan, I mean, okay, so this is, I wrote this January 13th. I'm making this video January 16th. If you're watching this video like February or March or April, look, my opinions might have changed, okay? Just understand that. I change my mind pretty often, you know? Like one day I'm bullish and one next day I'm like, yeah, you know what, like I'd rather hold that thing and then I, I sell. Um, so just, you know, like, if you're watching, if you're reading content and it's like old, like, you know, just be open-minded to the idea that this guy could have changed his mind, right? Especially in crypto because it's so volatile, things change so fast. It's like, you know, what, like, what am I supposed to do, right? I, I can't just, you know, make videos every time I sell like 5% of my stack. Like that makes no sense. Um, yeah, like, you know, I, I, don't, I don't have time for that, right? Um, but, you know, my current plan is to start unwinding my positions once Coinbase is like the number one app on the uh, app store. That's been a pretty good indicator of like when things are like getting super frothy. Cause think about it. I mean, if Coinbase is like the number one finance app, then like, you know, like who is left to like download it, right? Like, you know, like at that point, it's pretty, pretty, pretty nuts. Um, or when majors start hitting all time high. So, you know, if the coin hits up like 70K, Ether hits like 5K, then I'm like, you know what? Like, you know, it's probably gonna go higher, but I, I don't care, right? I'm just gonna start the 21 day unbonding process. You know, because the idea isn't for me to sell everything at the top, it's to just manage risk and hopefully um, sell at a good price, right? That, that's like all I can do. Um, so yeah, you know, I, I can also be wrong, right? I, I've been wrong many times, right? Just go, like, I, I don't delete my YouTube videos. You can just go down um, and watch all the content I made. Some coins I've done really well on, some coins I've done horribly on. Um, so like what that, I mean, yeah, like I'm a mid-curve, right? Yeah, I'm literally, part of the 68 percent so like what the hell do i know um that's kind of let's gonna zoom out here that's kind of uh my take on this uh you know i think celestia is an amazing project um i think you're gonna see hundreds of roll-ups launch this year using celestia for da and you know some will drop some won't that's fine um but if you understand i guess like why it's going up then you might be able to better understand or navigate the markets um, and also, right, like this type of price action and this type of, you know, market dynamic, th this only exists in crypto, right? So hopefully, right, if, like whether the, this does or doesn't play out, I hope you learn something about like why things happen. Um, and of course, you know, this is very, very specific to Tia, um, of course. Um, and, you know, like maybe Dimension, right? It's like maybe, you know, Celestia becomes 3.3. Um, and dimension becomes nine nine, right? Because you, you you get the TIA airdrop, you you stake it, you get the dime airdrop, you stake it, and then the, you stake everything. You, it's like nine nine, right? Um, you know, it's and I, I understand people get upset when they hear three three or nine nine because you know it's like PTSD. But I'm only using these terms because it's familiar for people, um, so it's like the idea clicks better, right? Instead of like you know calling Celestia three three is. A much simpler way to get this idea across than to call Celestia like the 
the modular money that brings you airdrops to like the mono, the, the modular thesis um, to kill all monolithic theses to um, dethrone Ethereum as the global settlement layer. Who like what the what the fuck, right? Um, so that's gonna be it for me. Um, it's a longer video, but I think I I mean I I had some fun recording this, so hopefully uh, this was pretty interesting. Um, anyways, I'm gonna put this thread in the description below. You, you can kind of read through it. Um, you know, if you look at my, my quote tweets in my comment section, you know, there's like some really angry people. Um, but you know, it's like, what can I do? Right. I mean, it's people on the internet, like they, they're angry, right. They're very angry. Um, but hopefully you guys enjoyed, um, yeah, please like, and subscribe, leave a comment what you think. Um, and you know, check out the premium discord. Um, we provide premium research for premium subscribers. Prices will be going up at the end of the month. Thank you guys for watching and see you guys another time. Bye-bye.